there's a slightly different answer for people who are burned out than people who are sort of content and a little lazy and a little fearful. You know, that's sort of, there's slightly different answers. Okay. But because usually if you're coming in with burnout, you have to start. And this is really useful for anybody. You want to just start by like manicuring your nervous system, right? A little bit of emotional regulation. So like anybody who's burned out, you want to start by trying as much as you can to get seven, eight hours of sleep a night, for example, just like baseline. This is the amount of sleep we need. We know hydration, nutrition, that sort of stuff. Um, and you want to lean on basic tools like social support. Make sure you have a good social support network and you reach out and you're actually, you know, really based. This is the basic stuff that helps us manicure our nervous system. And then depending on how jacked you are, do one to two to three of the following a day. So if you're a little anxious, right, and a little burnt, you want to do either a gratitude practice, a mindfulness practice, or exercise. And it's literally a five-minute gratitude practice. And I could talk for the next two hours about the neuroscience of gratitude and why it's important, but let's just gratitude practice. Mindfulness, for stress reduction, you want 11 minutes of, like, breath work a day. It doesn't have to be super fancy um, or... I love running a uh, loving kindness meditation because it's a freaking script and you find an online, you know, and you j I literally just have to run the script and it does the same thing. It's actually better than most other forms of mindfulness or 20 to 40 minutes of exercise, right? You exercise when you're exercising for anxiety, you want to wait for your lungs to open up and to get a little quiet upstairs. That's a sign that the brain has released nitric oxide. It flushes all the stress hormones out of your system. So like, what I tell the people is if you're a little um, anxious, a little burnt, do one a day, two a day, you know, or three days. So that's where you sort of want to start really with if you're anyone. That's those are sort of like the peak performance basics. This is how do you just get in the ring? But the thing I want to emphasize, and this is really the place to start, everybody has what's known as a primary flow activity. For me, it's skiing, meaning like 80, 90 percent of the time I go skiing, it just drops me into the zone. For my wife, it's hiking with the dogs in the backcountry. For my best friend, it's playing guitar. For another good friend of mine, it's coding. For, you know, jigsaw puzzles, like whatever it is for you, you want to double down on that. Uh, and in fact, the research shows that if you can spend three to four hours a week on a primary flow activity, that might be the single best intervention to start with. And here's the thing, it's, it does all kinds of stuff. So flow's a focusing skill. So the more flow you get, the more flow you get. So if you're going skiing on Monday, you know, for you, it's your primary flow activity it might mean more flow at work on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We know that the heightened flow massively boosts happiness, well-being, um, overall life satisfaction, those things. And the afterglow flow seems to last a couple of days. The heightened creativity, well, it'll last a flow state by a day, maybe two. Um, and when we move into flow, it resets the nervous system towards zero. So it flushes our stress hormones out of our system. And I'd like to mention from a peak performance aging point of view, there are nine known causes of aging, all of them. What do they have in common? Inflammation, stress and inflammation. So anything you can do to combat stress and inflammation is combating aging and it's you know sort of job one. So you get a lot of bang for your buck with your primary flow activity. And the thing about it is, and the reason I wanted to mention it because you described a certain type of person and what happens is as we start to age, whatever, usually around, right around 29, 30, like those, the exact age group you described, you put away childish things. Oh no, I got a family, I got a job, I've got responsibilities, I can't ride my skateboard, I can't ride my surfboard, I'm not gonna play my guitar. I, you know, all those things go away and it's the exact opposite of what you need to be doing, right? Like, so it's very counterintuitive. And it's also, I will tell people, I will say, Everything I'm going to talk about, whether it's this or a handful of other things, they sound, they're not sexy, right? Like there's nothing really sexy. I always say nothing I talk about, if you bring it into a bar on Friday night, is going to get you laid. It's not sexy. <laughs> it's not like bioacting. You're not injecting rhinoceros horn peptides into your testicles. You know, I'm like none of that shit is happening. And it's not, um, it's just, it's the most deadly effective stuff in the world, period. It's what all the science shows. And everybody wants, they either want a shortcut or they want to whiz bang. Where's the app? Where's the technology? You know, and I, I like simple psychological tools that produce powerful neurobiological reactions.